Our correspondent in Germany, Jenny Hill there, and of course those in Germany who are against migrants travelling to their country clearly feel that they are at the sharp end of the crisis. But it's islands in Greece and around Italy where many migrants and refugees who make that perilous Mediterranean crossing end up. And on the Sicilian island of Lampedusa, a local carpenter was so touched by their plight that he cut wood from the wreckage of the migrants' boats and made wooden crosses, giving them to the migrants as symbols of hope. A senior curator Rater at the British Museum here in London was in turn touched by the carpenter's gesture and herself took action. Emma Jane Kirby reports. Last May, British Museum senior curator Jill Cook switched on her radio at home and heard this. The voice of Lampedusa's carpenter, Francesco Tuccio, as he combed his island's beaches, searching for driftwood from shipwrecked migrant boats to carve into crosses. At the time, he told me, he'd never worked with or felt such wood in all his life. It smelled, he said, of suffering. On a personal level, Jill was deeply moved by the carpenter's kindness. But on a professional level, she was extremely excited. Listening to uh, your um, programme... I was very moved by the carpenter using his skill just to offer people a little kindness and hope. Um, But also I recognised in this an object that we could show in the museum. We don't show photographs, we don't have much facility for connecting people to media stories. We're based on objects. And so here is a period of history in which because the refugees and the migrants have nothing, they're kind of invisible within the record. And to be able to record that in an institution such as this is just a brilliant moment for me. So I, I thought about it for a while and I thought, I, I'll check the phone directory. <laughs> so I did. If Jill sounded a little defiant there, it's because she was doing all of this without the museum's knowledge. She swore an Italian colleague to secrecy and asked him to call Mr Tuccio and commission him to make her a cross. I just knew that this was something that we ought to collect because it had a story to tell. And that's the most important thing about the museum is that we tell stories about all people in in all parts of the world in in so many different times. And so here was an object on on which hangs so many aspects of a story of worldwide significance. Lampedusa's carpenter immediately agreed to make and to donate the British Museum a cross and Jill began to frantically contact archaeologists she knew to sort out the complicated logistics of bringing it to London. She needn't have bothered. The carpenter just popped it in the post and one morning his parcel arrived on Jill's desk. And so a crude wooden cross with blistered blue, green and yellow paint now stands in a large glass exhibition case at the British Museum, a testimony to history in the making. Francesco Tuccio chose the wood he'd used carefully. It came from a boat which capsized off the coast of Lampedusa on the 3rd of October 2013, with the loss of 366 lives. It was that disaster which prompted the Italian Navy to launch their sea and rescue mission Mare Nostrum. And, coincidentally, that was the same boat from which the optician of Lampedusa saved 47 migrants. As you can see from the cross, he's even left a nail in place where, on, on a crucifix, the, the, the nail would appear through the hand of Christ. So it's a very powerful symbol, a very humble symbol. It's, it also sort of opens the door about, here is a museum, we are a reflection of the society around us. What should we be... Uh, collecting uh, about now and for the future. And back on Lampedusa, that's exactly, says carpenter Francesco Tuccio, why he agreed to donate the cross. He remembers how he felt when he got that initial call from the British Museum. 
Quando il British Museum mi ha, mi ha contattato, mi sono emozionato tanto. The museum allora, request, he says, made me feel so domanda. excited, so happy and proud. I never expected my work to get to this. E mi sono posto una domanda. And then I asked myself a question, he adds. If this message has reached such an important museum, visited by people from all over the world, is this enough then to break down the wall in the hearts of people who are still indifferent to this terrible crisis? Ci mostra la sua indifferenza. I would like future generations, he says, to remember when they look at the wood that it's made from suffering and that the cross is the symbol of freedom and the union of people. And the museum's new exhibit does seem to be affecting its visitors. It should definitely be here. Absolutely. You both it's look fantastic. like you're going to cry. Yes, yes. yeah, that's so right. I think it's fantastic. I mean, what, a, what a wonderful Indeed. thing to have as your last acquisition, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. I think the symbolism of it is amazing. For a symbol of hope to be made from the wreckage, it's... You seem quite moved. It is. It's beautiful. I love the meaning of the cross. A lot of people died coming from Africa, and it's like a tribute for them, to honour them. And so the secret acquisition of senior curator Jill Cook is now in the most public of places, a testimony to an extraordinary period of our history, but also, she hopes, a testimony to our humanity. We have to look to the future and how we reflect moments in world history uh, and what our community might be in, in the future, and I do hope that part of that community will be the children and grandchildren of people caught up in these desperate migrations and their children and grandchildren will know that we did notice what was happening and that we did care and that we did try and reflect the crisis, the desperation but also the hope in the collection that we make for the future.